Welcome to the lesson. Uh, I decided to do a little tutorial today um, on one of the rock school uh, rock school tunes. Been doing quite a few kind of rock school tunes. Uh, we're going to take one from the Grade Three rock school guitar exam today called Indecisive. It is a kind of American uh, pop punk kind of thing. Think Green Day, um, kind of uh, Blink One Eight Two, that sort of thing. So quite sort of racy, quite aggressive sounding. Um, very fast. We're in a one five five. Uh, beats a minute, so quite quite quick. Um, guitar sound wise, we're definitely thinking kind of an American kind of high gain amp. Um, I'm going through something like a kind of Mesa Boogie, something like that. Um, and and this kind of guitar, I'm going for the bridge pickup, um, just to give it that little bit of sort of grunt. But we want quite a bit of distortion, not a lot of reverb, just something quite kind of distorted, but just enough clarity so you can hear the notes without too much fizz or fuzz or anything like that, all right? So we'll get cracking straight away. There's a lot to cover. We're gonna start with a bar chord at the eighth fret. It's a C major bar chord. So we've got, okay, so I, I'm bar, I'm gonna race through these guys because I'd imagine by grade three you're all right with these, but I'll race through it. First finger bars the whole eighth fret. Your middle finger drops in on the third string, um, ninth fret. Then your third finger is 10th fret, um, fifth string, and your little finger is 10th fret, fourth string. Classic kind of major chord shape. Right, now, the thing that's difficult about this, each of these uh, hits are quavers. They're not going We want Now I'm doing that by using my left hand to pull off and stop and, and mute, basically. So I play, but then I just come off like that. So I'm kind of bouncing on the on the chord there that's how I'm getting that sound so just practice first of all just getting getting the four crotches but then just go okay so I'm just bouncing with the hand that's how I get the mute so that's quite a lot of work to start with that one so we just get okay that's the first part then we're going to move to the F chord same fret your first finger plays eighth fret on the fifth string and your third finger bars across bars across uh, strings four, three, and two on the 10th fret, okay? And you're gonna do it exactly the same. Now, I, a little tip here, I use my middle finger to mute the sixth string, because otherwise you'll get, you don't want that, okay? So it mutes it so that I can attack quite hard, and we're not, we're also muting the top string, okay, with the third finger again, so we should just have that's the chord. So we've gone from the C to the F, same rhythm, okay? Then we're back to the C, then to the G, so that's the F shape that we had a minute ago, up two frets, okay? So it's the same shape, you see that's the F, it's the G, so that's first finger 10th fret, fifth string, and then your third finger barring on the 12th fret, fourth, third, um, second string. Now, the rhythm's slightly different here, it goes. Okay, so we've got C, all, all cravers, F all quavers, back to the C, then up to the G, and we're going down, 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 down. So written in your books there, that is just written as a quaver, quaver, sorry, a quaver, a quaver rest, a quaver, a quaver rest, then three quavers. So you're getting one, two, three, and four. Think of it like that, okay? Try and use the rhythms in the book that there for a reason, obviously, and that, that should get you going on that first part. So there we've got. Next line slightly different, a bit of a variation, same chord. That C chord again, we're gonna get the same rhythm. Then we're up to the F, this rhythm's different. Okay, so that's going one, two, three, and four. Then we're back to the C, and again a different rhythm there. C, so one, two, and three, four. And then we jump pretty quickly to the G and just stab it on beat one. For the for the for the quaver, okay. So that second line, F, C, whole thing together from uh, bar one. F, C, G, C, F, C, G. Okay, so that's your whole uh, A section covered. All right, so that, that's basically a lot of chords going on. Remember the muting, all things like that. You've got to be really aware of that kind of thing, especially at this level. The left hand muting's uh, got to come into it, okay? So work on the chords first, 
then worry about the rhythm. So those chords have got to be, you know, nice and clear. Every note ringing throughout, that's really got to be, really got to be in, otherwise you're really going to struggle. Right, we're going to rattle through B section. Okay, so we're starting with the third fret on the fifth, uh, fifth string, and we're going one, two, three. Okay, that's the little riff. Now you'll notice that that second part is palm muted. So from kind of the end of what we, bar nine, okay, where we're going, so we're starting with a three, then we're going three again on the fifth string, up to the fourth string, second fret, back to the um, uh, third third fret, fifth string, so dun, 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 dun. Okay, then down to the low G on your sixth string, and two of those as quavers. So the first one isn't palm muted, but it's short. Then, you hear that palm mute. Then from there, we just go three, three, one on the thick string, okay? So, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Beginning of the final bar of that line, so that's bar, oh, bar 12. We're up to our fourth string, all right? And we're playing three, two, three, two, three, five on that fourth string. So I play with my third and second finger, three, two, three, two. Then I'm going to go from uh, on the fourth string, and I'm going to go three and slide upwards, okay? Now when you're sliding, one of the things you have to watch is keeping the pressure, okay? So I keep the pressure down on that string. If you slide and the pressure comes off, you'll get nothing, all right? You have to keep the pressure down, slide up to five, arrive at five, and then, and then stop the note. I sometimes stop with my right hand, like that, just to, okay, so we should have, okay, and that lasts for the rest of the bar, so we've got one, so I'm going from bar nine, one, two, three, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, then, okay, that takes us to the end of that line, then we're on to the next line, oops, sorry, uh, so that's bar 13, okay, very similar. Again, we're starting with the three, okay? Same rhythm for the next bit, but different different notes. So this this part, so I'm talking the end, the end of bar 13, we're going three on the fifth string, okay? Then we're going zero on your fourth, then uh, two on your fourth, then we've got a jump up to fifth fret on the fourth string. C major well, sort of arpeggio with a D in it. Okay, so now one of the things that I chuck in there is actually instead of that note, you can hit your open third, which is a G of course. Okay, so you instead you can get instead of things like that in the exams, you you find to try out. There's there's no problem with that as long as you're playing the notes. If you're playing them in a slightly different finger in position, that's fine as long as you, you're playing the notes. So that would that would be allowed, guys. All right. So I'm going to stick with what's written for now, though. So three, nil, two, up to number five. Notice how I'm in third position there. I.e., my first finger's rooted around there. Because then I'm going to go fifth fret, fourth fret on um, third string, then down. I move that down to so second fret. Now, squiggly line, it's vibrato, right? You might have come across vibrato before. So we've got. Now I'm using my middle finger there. You notice how my thumb is for once over the top of the neck. And we're just going to try and ever. Don't do that. It's not that. You're just ever so slightly dragging the, the, the note, just wavering in pitch ever so slightly. And I'll use my thumb to kind of anchor on the neck there. So. A little bit faster. So there we go. I'll play those bits together. So, with the palm mute. Okay, then from there we're up at fifth position, okay? And we get, you get this. Okay, so I'm at fifth position, middle finger, sixth fret, second string. I'm gonna go six, down to the five, back to the six, back to the five, so da 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 da. Then with my middle finger, I'm gonna slide from six to eight. Okay, and again, that same thing, you can hit rhythmically, we've actually got um, that, that, so you, this note's a quaver to a dotted crotchet. 
So I'll play all of that sort of second section. That's that's from bar thirteen. Here we go. Okay, there's no vibrato on that note either. Okay, so that concludes the uh, the B section. Okay, so that that that's happening there. So we're quite happy with that. Hopefully, just remember your palm mutes. Try and adhere to what I'm doing finger-wise with my left hand. It just makes more sense. It puts you in a good position and, and just checks everything's in the right place, really, all right? So that's cool, good. Next section, we've got some double stops. We're gonna start at um, first fret, third, um, sorry, first finger, third fret on your top string, and your third finger on the fifth fret of the second string, all right, and that is going. Now what I'm gonna suggest is that you bar with your first finger across the second and first string, like that, like I have there, okay? And you move your third finger in on the second string, okay? Because the next bar, all you would need to do is move your first finger off, which is ideal. Now that, that then moves up two frets, okay? Where you put your first finger on the fifth fret of the first string, and your middle finger on the um, sixth fret of the second string. And notice how we're filling the whole bar here. We've got we've got basically eight eighth notes. So we've got the whole bar, so we're thinking one, two, so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and then that shape we have. So this is going to bring you to bar uh, twenty. Move that current shape up two frets like that. All right. And that's gonna go, so we're gonna have seven on the first string, eight on the second string, and we get. So just think of that rhythm, just two cro two quavers and a crotchet. Coffee tea, coffee tea, if you like. Okay, so we got. Let me do that again. Fifth fret, seven. Good, onto the second line now, okay? So that's bar 21. Very similar deal here. Wouldn't worry about barring, you don't need to. However, first finger's gonna go, obviously third fret, um, top string. Third finger's gonna go fifth fret, second string. You're gonna do um, eight of those. Now, this is the chain. Middle finger drops in on the um, fourth fret of your first string. Highlights are kind of even major chord there, the G sharp. Then that shape moves up with your third finger onto seventh fret on the second string, and your first finger jumps in um, first fret on the, sorry, fifth fret on the first string. So we've gone from this three and five, five and four, slide up. That then puts us in position for the next part. You're gonna have your middle on your second string go six, five, six, five, six, eight, as we did before in bar 16, all right, so we got, so I'll play from bar 21. Okay, and that concludes that section. Now that section is written as section C and section G. That is because when you do the repeat, it comes back and you end up playing that section again, all right? We're not gonna go through the repeats as in go through them again, but I direct you at the end where we need to, to come to, all right? So that gets repeated later on before you go to the coda. Right, we're on to section D. Section D, the good news is that I think to my memory is exactly the same, let us just check, as section B. So you've got your palm in, and then down to on the sixth string, to, with the slide, remember? Back to the C. So it's exactly the same, okay, it's exactly the same. Let me just double check so we don't get any any uh, problems going on there. Yeah, absolutely exactly the same there, okay? So just bear that in mind, you've got no new stuff to the, learn there, but just remember your palm mutes and remember those slides. Remember when you're doing a slide, you keep the pressure down so you're not getting... People do that, you've got to keep the pressure down and move up, that's what a slide is, so that you can hear the movement rather than just a dead kind of note, all right? Cool, so then we're on to the guitar solo, uh, the E section, right? We're not gonna go through the guitar solo today. I have got the guitar solo in uh, tab, uh, which I will post with a video if people are interested, um, and it's just my interpretation of it, um, so you can use that if you'd like. 
We then, coming out of the solo, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So, coming out of the solo, bar 37, we've got this. That's the first part. I'm back at fifth position with my first finger. I'm using my middle finger to go six and pulling off to five. Remember, pull off. We pull off the note, we want to hear both notes. You strike it once at fret six. And you pull off so you can hear, I'm not getting. We should be getting, so I give it a little flick, just that middle finger just flicks off and it, it gives those two clear notes from, it's an F and an E basically, okay, so, okay, and that happens three times. Then you're going to put your third finger on the th um, seventh fret of the third string. So we've got two, three, then from there you're going to get, hit that seventh again, that seven again on the third string. First finger on the fifth fret, second string, so we got Sorry, that wasn't right. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, seven, five. Okay, that's that's two quavers. People often play that as da da, but it's three da da. Okay, as a lead into the next bit, which would be bar thirty nine, where the phrase repeats again. So the same as bar thirty yeah, seven. Three of those, but on the third one, instead of pulling off to the six, you slide up to eight. Okay. Again, same thing with the middle finger slide. Then you've got a bit of a stretch back to catch five. Okay. Now it writes this as a slide, which I'm not sure about. <laughs> um, to slide down is quite difficult. What people end up doing a lot of the times, they go and they play a note down. You, what you've got to do is slide and let the note die, and let it die completely, because otherwise you'll end up with a note down here which you don't want. So slide, and I tend to go like that with the rest of my hand, and just let it mute, and it, it, it kind of works, and it kills the note enough so that you're not stuck with some awful note that's not in key, all right? So that part. Then you're gonna hit number eight with your third, or actually, Let's go first finger, puts us in position. So it's a jump. First. First finger plays number eight. Now, this is the bit that gets absolutely everyone. It's got PB10. That means pre bend um, at fret 10. Now, the note in the bracket is the key one because that's the note you're hitting. It's an E flat 11th fret. So that's the note we want. Okay, so we've got to kind of approximate where it is. Okay, and we're gonna do that. So let me demonstrate that bit. Okay, a pre-bend is you bend the note without striking it with your right hand, okay? So, I've got the note there. Okay, roughly about there. Then I strike it, and I pull down. Instead of bending up, you're coming down. Then you pull off to eight. Now, all the time, what's good to get in the habit of is muting with your right hand. So with my right hand, I'm kind of stopping the second and third strings from doing anything, just purely by having them across there. And then I pull off and I've got eight, rather than having, you know, that kind of thing. And all the notes could ring and you've got loads of gain on it, it sounds really ugly, all right? So remember, we've, got, we've gone from eight, we're gonna use the third finger to bend, pre-bend up. Now you're not doing a full, like whole tone bend, it's semi-tone, so it's only kind of half what you would bend correctly anyway. Third finger bends up, you strike the string, pull down, off to eight. Third finger plays tenth fret second string, and then your first finger ends back on eighth fret first string. So that's... Okay, so that little bit, if I play from bar 37, A bit slower. One more time, a bit better than that. Okay, 
So it's that last section there, just watch as I was getting that open second string there. Be very careful with the right hand not to let that ring. And again, try practicing with your amp turned on so you can really hear it. Definitely the hardest bit of the tune, I think. It always trips people up that, and especially at the speed as well. Um, so you've got to be very careful to get that, get that. Right, good. Then we've got a whole bar where you hit the, uh, uh, the C, two, three, four. Then you've got to move back quite quickly. A power chord at third fret, C power chord. So that's first finger on your third fret, third finger on your fifth fret and the fourth string. Hit that one, move everything upwards towards the ceiling to a G power chord. Then back to the C. So yeah. Okay, so uh, if I just go from two, three, four, again, two, three, four. Okay, and that's that's that section done there. All right, so again, slow it down, take it through, watch all these slides at grade three, all stuff like this becomes quite useful because it, it, it's, it's kind of expected, you're lead playing, you need to be able to put slides in, you need to be able to bend accurately, all this sort of stuff, all right? So, we move on now to the bass. We've got a bass solo and a drum solo. Now, you, I'm sure you've seen this first and second time repeat before. Um, so the first time repeat means that we're going to get, um, we're going to go from bar, let's get these bars. So bar 43 to bar 48, okay. You're going to play it all the way through, okay. And then you're going to go back. Oh, sorry, that was absolute rubbish. Ignore that. You're going to play from bar 43 to bar 46, okay, where we've got the double lines, the end of the first time repeat. Then go back to bar 43, play it, play bars 43 and 44, okay. Then you're going to jump kind of downwards and play what would be bars 47 and 48, okay. So it's quite, it seems quite confusing. You'll probably just end up playing it from memory anyway, but it's worth kind of knowing what goes on. Then we've got to go a, D, a DS, I'll talk about that in a minute. So if I go from bar 43, I'm gonna play um, two C power chords, beats one and, one and two, three, four. Two G power chords on the next bar, two, three, four, then down to F on the first fret, two, three, and then back to G. So that four bar sequence is C, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, F, two, three, back to the G. Then you go back to bar 43, play the C, G, then going down to the F, this should be bar 47. So you're gonna play F, two, three, B before you hit another F, then you're gonna go G, 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 G. Okay, so I'll play the second time repeat there, a bit faster, C, three, Four, G, two, three, four, two, three. Okay, and that's it. That would then send you to the DS. Now the DS sign, again, remember how I said before that we repeat the C section, this is where we do it. it they've called it the G section, so we're going back to bar 17, and that's this part. Okay, and that is that section there. That would then lead you, we've already been through that, so I won't go through it again, but it's gonna lead you to the coda, okay? Because it says two coda at the end, which means you've got to then go to the coda, which is bar 49, which is this. First, first finger bars across first fret on the first two strings. You're gonna play that, then off to two open strings, then on again, then off, so we get on, off, on, off. Then, the third time, you slide from one. One to three. You do that twice, so we get. Then we're going to go up to fifth position for this little scale rundown, C major scale. Eighth fret first string, seventh fret first string, fifth fret first string, second string eighth fret, fifth fret second string, and then six on the second string. So it's on the first string that's eight seven five. So. Try and use your little finger if you can. That's a pain. So much easier than that though. Okay, so little finger, third finger, first finger, second string, eight, five, and six. Your last two are uh, crotches. Three, four, so it's one and two and three, four. Last little bit, you're gonna bar across fifth fret on the second and third strings. Play those together. Pop your middle finger on that sixth fret there. Then take it off. Okay, so you get five, five and six, and then five. Okay, 
that's it, job done. Okay, that's five crotchet rests at the end, all finished, okay? So that is, that's the whole tune in, in an exhaustive detail as I think is necessary. Um, your big marks are gonna come from obviously keeping in sync with the track, that's the kind of given, um, the clarity of what you're playing, so those chords need to sound. Obviously on a filthy sound, they'll sound a little less clear, but if you can, if you've got that going on, you, you won't be aiming, you won't be hitting the top mark. If you can nail this phrase, you know, the they'll, they'll love that. Yeah, definitely like that. Things like that make a huge difference. Solo is something else. Solo is something else really to look at entirely, but I, I generally say the solo is kind of the, the, the cherry on the cake. If you can nail all the other aspects, you, you'll be really kicking it. Um, so have a good crack through it. If you've got any questions about any of the bits that I've been through, um, send them through and I'll, I'll, I can do a, a, quick, a quick lesson on any of those. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'll be doing some more Rock School tutorials. Get that one in the bag and I'll see you next time. Cheers.